Hello subscribers and non-subscribers and welcome back to Let's Play Stellaris. Uh, sorry there wasn't a part last week. Uh, for those of you that are not in my Discord, I made a post saying that I was going to be busy up until... Um, or I was going to be relatively busy up until like July 25th. Um, so I may not be able to record videos for Stellaris and uh, my Victoria series um, every week. <clears throat> Including either I may only be able to record one or the other. I may sometimes be able to record neither. In this case, I wasn't able to record either. Uh, let me get my timer set up and ready to go. And let's begin. So I don't really... Oh, uh, well, I did. So I didn't manage to sit down and actually bother doing any testing. But um, I did read some form posts and whatnot. Um... In regards to the active effect of the last baul um, relic, I was about to say artifact. I mean, I suppose artifact is also somewhat accurate, but either way. Um, so it, it is a case of each activation you get a single use, but as long as you have access to the thing, you have effectively unlimited uses of it. As a result, in theory, if we get the influence to activate it, um, I could use it here on Zempek 4. Um, even though I'm using Julie's or whatever it's called, um, Planetary Modifiers mod that also adds in the ability to have wondrous planets and planets with um, precursor stuff on them. Precursor stuff remains during terraforming. Um, Planetary Wonders, however, do get removed. So we're not allowed to go and use that over here on Bolster League. Uh, but it should, to my understanding of the rules, um, for terraforming with that stuff, Zempek 4 should be fine. It'll stay exactly as is. The warm water lakes will likely get re-rolled um, as something else likely some sort of positive effect uh, but we'll have 100% habitability on this complete. world for our primary species or at least we should because you know it's a Gaia world double check yes we we do still get 100% habitability on Gaia worlds just you know double check to be on the safe side I had no reason to suspect it wasn't the case but you never know it's always possible. Construction complete. Of course, this also means we could, in theory, turn both Grenier 3 and Grenier Prime into Gaia worlds. Turning the Grenier system the into a pretty powerful system, potentially. Um, let's go ahead and learn how to clear deep sinkholes. And you finish. They're wonderful. You finish building up all this stuff. Um, I need to remember to go ahead and mark that as a stay the hell away from there. Because I don't need that, uh, or any of my ships, accidentally flying into there. Wonderful. And yes, that chopped us off over here. Now who the hell are those guys? I don't recall them at all. But apparently there's somebody there. Uh, you are fanatic materialists. You walked the path of heresy. We're not able to go and explore too much here. Because, you know, they block the vast majority of routes past this natural wormhole. But hey, we have it, technically. We do have the ability to... Actually, we're the only ones who can secure that. 
I don't think there's any particularly valuable resources there though, so it doesn't really matter too much, but you know, in theory. Construction complete. Out of curiosity, real quick, do we have terraforming here as an option? No. Okay. Right now I can't terraform on anything unless I have a uh, Unless I've colonized it. Um, I'm going to build you a habitation district. So I'm going to go ahead and actually make a save real quick just on the off chance it doesn't work as it's supposed to. And we're going to go ahead and turn Zempec 4 into a nice Gaia world. We won't be able to use this again for another 10 years, but you know what? I can live with that. So, new Baul life seating. So, our environmental specialists are pleased to report that the terraforming process of Zempec 4 has completed. The planet has been successfully transformed into a Gaia world, owing to their deployment of laboratory-created plant hybrids. Containing carefully selected segments of the bowel genetic code, once again, as a result of this process itself, not quite fully understood to our geneticists, a number of dubowel populations have appeared planet-side, emerging when terraforming near to completion. Excellent. More slaves. And that, of course, means we got a couple extra pops on here that we have to live with. But we can live with that. That's perfectly fine. And yes, the ancient city infrastructure remained, the ancient industrial ruins, the ancient generator ruins, all that stuff seems to have stayed and we get world terraforming and... Okay, warm water leaks was not re-rolled. Maybe it's only negative traits that get re-rolled. I'm actually not 100% certain on uh, the rules for that. I suppose that would make sense though if it's only um, negative effects that get re-rolled. Let's go ahead and build a commercial zone here. Well, nah. Zempic is our agricultural center, and I'm a little surprised that you're, you're saying it's a bureaucratic center. There's a single administrative office, and it's not even upgraded. And literally nobody's working those jobs. This is not... No, 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 I didn't want automation. Uh, it's an agricultural world. I don't care what you think, game. Zempec is an agricultural world. I'm going to send you to go ahead and get Ardon. Once I have the ability to go and get Ardon more accurately. Okay, we can get another tradition. Let's... I mean, that's useful, I suppose. Yeah. The uh, breeding pool thing is not the worst. Complete. It's not super useful, but it's not the worst. And just double check that I only get the one use. Yep, okay. Hey, you never know. It's always possible complete. that devs broke something at some point. So, you know, you gotta double check that stuff sometimes try and take advantage of it while you can if you care to do that and I am the kind of person who would yes Let's see so you have an opening but nothing I can really put here that would do any good so we'll just leave that open for now Oh yeah, that's the afterburners. Yeah, I don't give a crap about those. System survey complete. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Wonderful. Let's get naval capacity up. And you need an upgrade. 
easiest thing to give you is better uh, foundries, which is what I'm going to do. Um, okay, you already have the food processing thing. Uh, not really anything else. Well, I suppose I can give you a gene clinic. Not that it would do a whole hell of a lot of good, but I suppose it's better than nothing. And we're sitting on max food. Go ahead and sell a bunch of food. That gets us a bunch of energy credits that we'll then proceed to use for, I don't know, something. We'll find a use for them at some point. Have you finished building up? You have, actually. So, yeah, I wrote you down. You were 723 at the start. You are now up to 4k. I want to go ahead and get you fully upgraded to a star hold. No. I think it'll be fine like that. I say that and it'll turn out I'm wrong, but you know, your main job is just to hold out till I can get a fleet up there, if nothing else. If I don't have to send a fleet, that's wonderful, but it's not a requirement. God, even with that, uh... Um, what is it? commercial zone here, you still struggle to have jobs, because I can't give you any new ones. Uh, that's not fully accurate. I could replace this with mining districts, sure. You have plenty of housing. Construction complete. Spare right now, so sure, let's do that. I need people I can rival. Sadly, nobody seems to be powerful enough for me to rival. And I mean, we did up the difficulty by one tier. And yeah, that kind of hampered us a little bit at the start until we managed to conquer our neighbor up here. The spirits have granted and us new wisdom. Now they're just no longer an issue. I think next time we'll uh we'll up the difficulty maybe an extra tier. Is uh really I think the only thing we can do. Wow, food is actually selling for more in bulk than minerals. Construction complete. You still got a little ways to go. Can I replace you with anything? No. I think I'll probably leave you as a generator district then. Also, I don't think we need all these city districts. But, you know, I'll leave them. No reason to get rid of them. They'll be needed eventually, I'm sure. Just, they're not needed right this second. So I could get rid of them and it wouldn't really hurt us at all, but, nah. Screw it, we'll leave them be. And let's get a commercial district here. Well, your main issue is you don't have five clerks. If you had five clerks, you wouldn't be having any issues. Can I move anybody over to Galonde? Okay, Galonde is full. That's full. Do I want to replace you with that? And I kind of just want to go ahead and replace all of the um, Abo Banyites here in Egrolis, if I can. Takes a little time to do, though. Evidently. And I hate that the game keeps 
deselecting my primary species on the planets whenever System one of them grows. Complete. Okay, you're still going to refuse to grow my species that I want you to grow here. That's wonderful to know, game. So yeah, I'm just going to keep you on that. And he, apparently each time I make a change there, it slows down. Or not slows down, but um... Well, technically it does slow down growth because complete. it slightly resets them. Wonderful, thank you game for informing me that I am now able to reverse engineer stuff, or rather that we're ready to do that. Okay, so even with five clerks working there, you still struggle to meet your demands, so fine. Well, technology will help there. You don't really desperately need the commercial zone. Because then you're just going to have a whole bunch of worker jobs that you can't do anything about. Let's get some more civilian industry. That's going to move some of those people there. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to you. And ship some more of these guys over. And by some more, I mean one. Because apparently that's all I can ship over. Construction complete. But I suppose we'll just have to make do with that. Let's go ahead and reverse engineer some more technology. That got us shield capacitors as an option. A useful tech, not desperately useful, but uh, it is useful. Anomaly found. Technically. Also, not sure if any of my mods broke again. I'm hopeful none did. But I kind of get the feeling it's possible some of them did. And again, Paradox's current launcher is absolute garbage. Okay, replace one of those cities with a, another agricultural district, or I guess not another. Well, technically it is, yeah. see so this was a technology I don't really care for either way that one I don't care for really I do kind of like well I suppose this does give me an opportunity so pest control in theory gives me a justification to go to war with my neighbors because they would be in breach of galactic law. Um, although presumably we would need to get rules here that would justify allowing me to use breach of galactic laws justification to go to war. Sadly, nobody really supports pest control. Most people are supporting um, conserve or conservation act, although not by much. It's only what, not even two thousand completely. It's what, like eighteen hundred ish. You know, if uh, the Balsaig Empire could get just a little extra power, and I'm gonna obviously get some of my own as well, uh, that'll be useful. Currently, elections are being held for the council positions that automatically goes to currently the top three powers uh, being on the council does give you um, a little extra I th i'm pretty sure it gives you a little extra diplomatic weight i could certainly be remembering incorrectly but i believe it gives you a little bit extra diplomatic weight She had a curiosity, what is our diplomatic weight in total? So 3.6, what's most of that coming from? Most of that is actually coming from our fleet power, followed relatively closely by our economy, and then 
pops and technology are actually sort of a ways down there with technology actually being at the bottom. Um, let's see, our neighbors are mostly technology. Granted, they're still well behind me in total and also just in terms of how much their technology is contributing, but yeah. Oh boy, that's just the way this is all working out for us. Let's see, so we're gonna go ahead and get that handedly. Nobody's gonna be able to stop us from becoming one of the leading council members. Construction complete. We're about to get strike cruisers, which that'll be fun. We'll add a couple of those to each of our fleets. And that'll be a couple extra military points. Uh, by the time we get those built, uh, the naval capacity thing should be researched. Of course, that'll take us back over our naval capacity, I'm sure. So we won that. Like I said, I'm pretty sure being on it does give you a little extra. Yes, you get 20% for being a council member. Obviously, I should note that there are voting options to decrease the um, number of council seats. You can eventually get to where you are the sole council member, or rather just whoever is the strongest is the sole council member. Presumably, if you're trying to enact that law, um, or that rule rather, it's because you're the strongest. Um, obviously, we don't quite have the support yet to be able to do that. But eventually, we'll be able to get it down to two and then one. So the Empire... Uh, excuse me, I was about to say the Empire. The members of the Galactic Community have voted to establish a Galactic Council. Membership in this august body will be limited to representatives from the three most powerful and influential empires in the community. Until a new council is elected, these are the United uh, Vimlis Coalition, who are... Uh, these guys, uh, I think one of the first people we met at, they might, I think they were the second people we met. Somehow, these guys further away we met, I think, before we met the, uh, Pajalukmite Empire. Um, the Scree Coalition, who are up here, and then the... And Fulan Sacred Mandate, which is us. The members of the council are expected to lead and safeguard the galactic community. Their increased powers allow them to cut through some of the red tape that so often inhibits the decision-making process in large political institutions. Now we can finally get things done. That, of course, also boosts up Tayaki Pest Control a little bit, but we still aren't quite there yet for it being more likely to pass than Conservation Act, but it's it's smaller. It's about, what, 1,400 more points now? So, you know, it's a little closer, but we still got a ways to go before we can try and complete. enact that. And those strike cruisers will help, at least a little. You go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and spend to build that. Let's go ahead and take this stuff down here. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Uh, that gets us the pillar of affliction. Uh, planet unique building. Increases food output. Not that food output is a problem. And not that it ever will be. Let's go ahead and get the escort cruisers as well next. No reason to research any of these other options. They're not exactly worth it right now, I imagine. Uh, especially point defense destroyers. It's a useful concept, but the tech itself is not actually super useful right now. Um, strike cruisers in the past, their advanced combat interdiction system used to be limited to a range around the ships when ships used to have actual auras that had ranges on them. 
no longer a thing. Uh, I think that was removed all in 2.0. So I used to always design them as being ships that were supposed to fly in close and get into the fight, but that's not really how they have to be designed nowadays. Um, I do kind of like the idea of them being more long range now. Um, you know what? Sure, if you think you can make do with the improved bombardment, I will let you have it. Although it does decrease your damage output by about one point. Not that that really means a whole hell of a lot, but you know, it does decrease it technically. Also, no plasma throwers. Thank you. It's a little too far away. Or not too far away. It's just, it's not particularly good. And of course, the game has a problem with properly... Yeah. Medium, medium, mediums. You know what, I'll just go all medium. Screw it. It's a little easier just to do that. And again, no plasma throwers. Uh, well, what are plasma throwers good for? They are good for knocking down armor and hull. So, yeah, the best thing to replace them with would be... UV lasers and relatively soon-ish... Um, they'll be replaced by uh, X-ray lasers. I'm like, I know there's a new laser. I can't remember what the next tier is. Oh, yes. Don't forget to go ahead and add those to the fleet design. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I do that, what's the lowest range you have? 60. I'm going to set you to artillery tactics, a range of 60. Well, yeah, if I was to include a bunch of you in each of my fleets, I might go for uh, flanking with a range of 60. But the fact of the matter is that doesn't make all hell of a lot of sense. I'm only going to have one, maybe two in each fleet at most, so yeah, I think we're better off just setting you to artillery 60. So strike cruiser, strike cruiser, for now they only get one because that's all we can afford to put in each of our fleets. But that won't be the case for very long. Or at least it shouldn't be. Oh yes. Construction complete. Getting rid of those things doesn't actually do a whole hell of a lot for uh, improving jobs because it's just shifting clerk jobs to being farmer jobs or whatever else. So I think you probably would actually be better off with the extra amenities from the city districts. So yeah, let's shift all those farms back to being city System districts. Survey complete. I kind of forgot about that. Uh, what's this? A small fleet of derelict uh, Gendionite warships has recent, or was recently discovered in the Anukia system not far from the territory of the Gendun... Eh. Gedeonite Marauders. Computer logs of the ships indicate that their crews fled into our space to escape some kind of clan feud. Unfortunately for them, they brought few supplies and soon starved to death. The ships have been adrift ever since. Our engineers have gone over the ships and they appear to be in decent condition. If they are crewed, we could commission them into our service with our own fleets. Uh, either get 200 minerals or I can at least look at them and see if they're really worth keeping around or not. So let's say they might be worth keeping around. Are they actually worth keeping around? Uh, the answer to that is their cruisers are uh, worth 348 fleet power compared to our cruisers 686. Uh, they have Ripper Auto Cannons, which are nice, but not exactly useful. 
Yeah, I think we're fine without them. Also, the graphics are kind of broken on them. So, yeah, scavenge fleet, goodbye. You're worthless. Uh, okay, somebody decided to use our magical emergency measures uh, functionality to force vote on the guardians uh, on the guardian angels act which uh, guardian angel is the bonus to defense army morale but decreased diplomatic weight from fleet power and army upkeep there's my timer this is still gonna pass unless well now even if the other three No, actually, if the other three join me, I think we can just barely beat it, especially if I can pump up my military a little bit, because, you know, we got a little under 1,500 days before this actually um, is finished, or the voting is finished, rather. So we got some time. We have some time to go ahead and decide how to do this. So yeah, if I could get these three to join me and then pump up my diplomatic weight just a little bit, we'll be able to do it. Sadly, we can't do that though. Uh, we don't have favors with those three, so they're not going to support us. And uh, there's no way I'm going to get my fleet power or my diplomatic weight pumped up 3,000 points. So that's going to pass. It doesn't really hurt us. It's just kind of a... I don't... <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't want to have to pay the extra upkeep for armies. Uh, I mean, it doesn't. Again, it doesn't really hurt us at the end of the day. It means basically nothing. I just would like to save some energy credits if I can, because we're not quite at the point in the game where we're just rolling in energy credits like there's no tomorrow. Hopefully, we get there soonish. That would be wonderful. Uh, but that's a ways out. Let's see, so these guys are... Yeah, they're going to take a while to build. Let's go ahead and actually, I think, upgrade our shipyards to star holes. You don't need a shipyard there. Awom is going to be solely, I think, a anchorage place. Where the hell are the anchorage is again? There they are. I hate that this stuff's not in alphabetical order. That would be just wonderful if they could do that. It should be pretty easy to just tell the game to sort the buildings in alphabetical order. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Womb is going to be a naval cap area. Um, you know, we'll wait the three months to get the doctrine support vessels for the extra fleet power or naval capacity rather it's not really gonna change anything significantly if we just wait a little bit longer i do want that research institute let's build that on the capital and of course i can build that anywhere and i can build however many i want there's no limit Beyond complete. planetary limits. But, you know, those are different limits than the one I'm talking about. Construction complete. I mean, maybe we'll go and build the Pillar of Affliction at some point here on Zempek just for the heck of it. Uh, but I don't think we will. I really don't. It just doesn't seem particularly worthwhile. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. There's the naval capacity. That's 20 months to research. I believe the game uses a flat 30 days per month. Would we be able to 
make it. I mean, granted, I still don't think this would knock us up uh, 3,000 points, but, you know, it would help to close the gap. If I could get this for that extra 10% and then build a grand embassy complex, that'll get us an extra envoy, not an extra two, because, again, it's not cumulative. Or, well, what the game shows there is cumulative of all the other upgrades plus this one. It's kind of annoying that it works that way. I really wish that was just the new, but that's fine, whatever. So that, that should get us up to three. And each envoy is worth how much? An extra 10%. So in theory, that gets us an extra... F Ooh. Some people decided to switch to abstaining, and uh, some people actually did join us. So it looks like Guardian Angels Act shouldn't pass unless the AI starts flipping back and forth like it sometimes does for various things. Not necessarily the Senate. I've never paid too much attention to it to see if the AI regularly flips back and forth between the two sides, but we've seen in Stellaris and even some of Paradox's other games where the AI just can't make a decision if its life depended on it. But let's go ahead and get Xeno Relations. Help to solidify that lead for not getting the Guardian's Angels Act to pass. And uh, that's going to be it for this part. So next part we will continue researching stuff we will hopefully start being able to stockpile some influence and uh maybe go to war with one of our neighbors again we'll see because the reality is nobody can beat us well that's not completely accurate none of the normal empires can beat us in a fight they are all pathetic with one actually being inferior um those guys are over here. Now, I'm a little surprised at these two. The corporation and the empire here that are off to our um, east. I guess galactic east, rather. Um, haven't yet formed a federation. They typically have when I've gone and played these saves for myself. A little surprising they haven't done it yet. That gives them a bit more of a fighting chance, but either way, they'd still lose. Uh, that's going to be, like I said, that'll be it for this part. Let me go ahead and save real quick. So that'll be it for this part. I will see you all next time uh, where, like I said, we'll get our fleets, get their strike cruisers. We'll pro hopefully be able to start saving up some influence to start claiming territory of our neighbors and hopefully go to war with one of them in the nearish future. Uh, but until next time, quick reminder, I do have a Patreon. You can find a link to that down below. That is the easiest and best way to help support the channel if you enjoy the content. I also down there have a link to my Discord. I highly recommend joining it, even if it's only for uh, being able to stay, updated, eh, to stay updated on channel happenings. Uh, I also have some affiliate links down below for picking up just base game Stellaris and also for picking up this specific DLC if you don't yet own it or the base game. Um, and if you use those affiliate links, the channel gets a small commission. Uh, but until next time, a goodbye and farewell. <laughs>